Um, wanted to run through a few things today with you on social media. Before we do, if I could have everybody stand up for a second, and we're going to do a little self-selection to reward everybody that's great with this social media, so I know who else could teach this. Um, okay, so if you already have a website, or if you do not have a website, I'm sorry, if you don't have a website, uh, if you could sit down, please. Okay? I'm keeping an eye on you guys. All right, good. Um, if you do not have a Facebook page for your company, grab a seat. All right, this is good. If you don't have a Twitter account that you use for your business, grab a seat. If you don't have a LinkedIn company page, not a LinkedIn profile, but a company page, grab a spot. Got some pros in here. If you don't have a Google Plus company page, grab a seat. Okay, so if you have questions after this, ask any of the people that are still standing and they'll be able to help you out. All right, so thank you very much. So we've got some great folks in here. And for the folks that sat down right away, we can absolutely help you, and there are some common sense things that I'd like to guide you through as we talk through today. Um, what we'll do today is talk a little bit about who BusyWeb is, what, what our hive of folks can take for you. Um, we're all about the bee thing, so be sure to grab a bit of honey in the back um, when you're done. And uh, we'll go through an online marketing quick start. Then we're going to hit a little bit about website basics, how to set your online strategy, and then the real meat and the fun how to use each of those tools that I had you all sit down for in real life for both who you should target and what you should use it for. So take notes and if you want any of this back from me, there's an email address at the very bottom down there. Um, you can either dial um, 612-4-BUSY-O or you can dial or send an email to sales at busyweb.com and we'll get that to you. Um, extra shortcut. There's a sheet at the front or that uh, Chad gave out to you. He's the nice fellow in the blue there. If you fill out that sheet and you write presentation, we'll give you the presentation. If you write Facebook, you'll be entered in for a drawing to get a Facebook page built for you. Or if you have all of that and you don't have a local page for your company yet, just write local in the upper right and you'll be entered in a, into a drawing. One person's going to get a Facebook page. One person's going to get a Google Plus local page. So keep with me and write in that on that sheet. If you don't have a sheet, just raise your hand and Chad will get that to you. All right, so here's BusyWeb. What we do is we do social media online marketing in a nutshell. So we'll build a website for you. And when we build that website, we make sure that it cross posts to Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Google+. So you don't have to hit all five of those places every time you want to do some marketing. You can instead focus on your message and let the social networks, let your website take care of all that heavy lifting. So it works out really slick and is a huge time saver for our clients. We also do search engine optimization, content marketing and hosting and all kinds of other wonderful things, but it really, it all focuses around the website. What your social media networks can look like, up in the front, that's a Google Plus page, if you've not seen Google Plus before. Right behind that is a Facebook page, right behind that's a LinkedIn company page, and behind that's Twitter. You've probably seen all of these, but notice it's all branded the same. If you're branding and if you're serious about it, make sure that no matter where people are finding you, they know who you are by just seeing that brand. Make it noticeable and make it easy. So let's go into online marketing as a quick start. It needs to be not as much about selling, especially in social media, as it is about helping. You know, we talked through direct mail and advertising already. That's the spot where you get out and it's deals and offers and specials and getting people's attention and getting them to do something right away. With social media, it's more of a conversation, right? So you have to know who you're trying to reach and what you're trying to reach them for and then start just helping answer the questions that you know those key people are going to be asking questions about. So if you can hit that and just keep being that common source of knowledge and information for your clients, they'll be knocking on your door and asking them what to do. The other thing in there is when you're serving your target market, you're going to want to give them that next step after, the, after you've identified and answered exactly the one thing that they're, trying to or that they're struggling with like crazy. Give them that next step. What do you do from here? Do you sign up for my email list? Do you like me on Facebook for more information? Do you sign up for a consultation? Do you fill out a buzz report request form, which you have in your sheets, hint, hint. Um, that's the kind of stuff that you want to drive toward. And focus on 
return on input. We all know ROI, return on investment, right? But with social media, it's a little bit weird. You can spend a lot of time in social media, but not spend a penny on it, right? So if you're spending a lot of time and doing a lot of stuff, make sure that that input that you're giving to your clients, customers, and prospects is actually paying off by measuring what you're doing. And then finally, creating a mix of content. You don't want to be a one-trick pony in social media. So make sure that you're not just posting the quote of the day or that one special offer. You know, if you're doing offers and stuff on social media, there's a time and a place for that. Shouldn't be more than about one in 10 posts should be that special dealer offer. So about 10% of the time. But don't hit people with the same thing over and over again. Conversation with others, sharing links, thanking people and engaging them in conversation. You want to do a little bit of all of that in your social networking. And then finally, and we'll get into this in a little bit more detail, and if you read the article, thank you first, but also engage, inform, capture, and convert should be your mantra in online marketing. You want to engage people by being educational, by not selling and instead helping. You want to inform them, give them the details and the, point, and the points that they need to get in order to take that next step. And when they're ready to take that next step, you're going to capture them and then go right back to engage and inform, engage and inform until you convert them into a client or, or a new prospect and customer. A little bit of basics about your website. Who here has a website again? Almost everybody, right? Okay, so if you have a website, do you have the rest of your social networks on that website? You know, if you're doing social media at all. Make sure that where people find you, they can find you where they prefer to spend their time. So if you've got a Facebook fanatic that's visiting your website for the first time, if they click on that like button for you on Facebook, then they'll get your information every time you update your Facebook page, right? No matter how fantastic your website is, people aren't going to be beating down the door or clicking down the screen to get to it every single day. But if they're on Facebook, they're going to be checking that every day while they're checking to see what their neighbor just did. So make sure that you include that. Incorporate that social media and make it as easy as possible to connect with you. Give them those links, those details, the next step to take when you're working with them. And then pay attention to SEO. We'll talk a little bit about SEO in a little bit. SEO is search engine optimization, how to rank higher on Google, Bing, Yahoo, and all those places. If you format your website to make it as easy as possible for you to be found, you're probably going to be getting found a little bit more than your competition. And another key with SEO, you have to be consistent when you update it. I like to use a tool called WordPress. This is the way we normally set up our WordPress clients. You'll notice that um, Larry uh, actually talked about Google Analytics and what, what you should do. We have that built right into our website. You log into your website and you can see how many visits you're getting, what the top searches are, what all of the um, top pages on your website are, and how people are finding that. Do more of what's working, and then if you have a great campaign or have been working on something and it's just not resonating, change up your tactics and try it again and measure to make sure that you're getting what you need. Editing a, a page in WordPress is super simple. This is the post for the uh, Landing More Sales by Marketing Smarter Online post. And so we've got an image in here. It's fully search engine optimized. There's excerpts. And you can see if, you're, if you have eagle vision from the back of the room, if you can edit a Microsoft Word document, you can edit a post in the tool that we use, which is called WordPress. You know, bold, you hit the B button, italics, you hit the I button. You make a link, you just hit the little linky looking button. It's really easy to do, and it puts the power of the web into your hands. So don't be intimidated by the technology of the web. You can update your website and keep it up to date and keep it engaging if you use the right tools. For SEO, again, you need metadata, keywords, and descriptions. Don't get too caught up in these key, in these words and these terms. Basically, you need to make sure that your website is written so that the search engines can find you. Metadata is mostly titles and descriptions now. Keywords, if you go into, if you go into Google or if you go into the back end of your website and you have an HTML website and you just do meta, uh, meta keywords equals, and then you list all the keywords you think anybody might find you on, it's going to help you none. It's not going to work at all. Google ignores keywords now. It'll actually help you a little bit if you already have content in your website to support that, but you can actually get downgraded if you try to stuff your website with keywords. Now search engine optimization has really grown into what's, what's called content marketing. 
So if you can focus on content, focus again on being as helpful and as useful as possible to your clients, that's where you're going to start seeing results because Google makes all its money off of being as informative and helpful to the people that are searching as possible. And by the way, who is the customer on Google? Advertisers are the customers. You're not the customer. So if you're putting out the information, make sure that it's as helpful as humanly possible so that you get in front of that network. Google likes to reach out. That's why they did Google Plus and all that stuff. They want to, get as, they want to know as much as possible about you. And as a business, it's your job to get out that information so that people can find you as easily as possible. Google Webmaster Tools at google.com slash webmaster will analyze your website and tell you where you're doing well and what you could improve on. Um, I list the link here, but if you just Google Google Webmaster, it'll pop up. Same thing with the Google Keyword Tool. That's a long URL. Just type in Google Keyword Tool and you'll get to it right away. That'll, if you enter the Google Keyword Tool, enter in a couple of keywords that you think you might want to focus on and your website URL. Google will actually analyze your, co your content on your website and give you the relative search frequency for advertisers on the keywords that you've selected and give you a bunch of ideas to include as well. Very, very helpful. Then, of course, they want you to spend some money on advertising, but that's up to you. Responsive websites. Who knows what mobile responsive is? We all have these things in our, in our pockets right now, right? Phones. I wish I had the 5S already, but I want, didn't want to stand in line. Um, if you have a phone or if your customers are walking by your place of business, they look up your website and they have to double click in and zoom and click and they can't figure out what to do, you probably just lost that sale. If you build your website so that it automatically reconfigures itself so that the, the text isn't out of, this, out of this world where you have to zoom in on it and so that you have a phone number that's clickable right away, you're going to be much, much better off. And it's easy to do now if you pick the right tools. Four, clickable for mobile response. Design it so that people can stab at your website. They can click at it and touch it. Um, with phone numbers, there's a little trick in HTML. You just say tell equals in your phone number, and that makes it clickable on browsers. Um, it's, imp it's important to keep that important information up front. And if you have Flash on your website, now is probably a good time to, to analyze that and move away because it's just not usable on Androids or iPhones now. You know, they just sold 9 million new iPhones over the weekend, about, uh, what was it, 700 million iOS devices so far. Just incredible amount of people are browsing on the web, and 28% of those smartphone owners say they mostly get the internet from their phones now. So if you're not designing for that market, you're losing those people. When you land the sale, we already talked about this with a call to action, make sure you tell them what to do next. If you're spending time, especially on an online advertising campaign, and you're driving them to your home page, you're probably going to lose those folks. So spend the time to draw, drive them right to a page on your website that'll give them the information that they need to take the next step. You might want to drive all of your people when you link to them on Facebook. So if you put your website's URL, you might want to go to a specific page that's designed for Facebook people. So go to busyweb.com Facebook from facebook.com slash busyweb. There's a mind bender. But that'll give you the next steps to take, and you'll know a little bit about those people, and you can answer their questions right from where you're at. All right, so setting your online strategy, next piece of this, right? You don't know what you don't know, so focus on who you can be to the people that matter most. If you send an email on this or, or drop a note or just write on that sheet, strategy, we'll email you this strategy sheet. This is really helpful for our clients. Answer the key questions about your company and about your customer so that you know who you are to your clients and who your best and favorite clients are and what they expect from you. It's as easy as trying to get into their heads, profile somebody, grab your very favorite client and say, how would they have searched to find me? Use that tool or use that insight to answer that person's questions in your social media posts. Or even better, on your website, which cross links to all of your social media posts. Make sure that you kick back, and those are your social keywords. Know your tools, and I'll talk about your tools in just a second, 
and then go into the frequency and the measurement. Make sure that you're hitting what you want to hit, that you're actually moving a needle instead of just goofing around. The amount of likes that your, face, that your Facebook page gets or the amount of tweets that you get or the amount of page visits you get on your website might not matter. You know, I could go onto Facebook and get one of those shady uh, Facebook like campaign things and I can get 5,000 new likes tomorrow on your Facebook page. But they'll probably be from largely third world countries. If you're a plumber in Minneapolis, that doesn't help you a lot. So un unless they have really bad food there and they're coming here, I guess. I don't know. Um, but make sure that you're going to the right people and measuring what you actually need to do. For your company, this is the important part. Hit your competitive advantage first. This is your elevator pitch. This isn't, we've been in business for 35 years and this is why you should care about us. This is what I serve for my clients. What hurts, client? Here's what we do to help solve that. You know, people that sell drill bits, they sell what? Holes. What's the hole you fill for your client? So once you do that, once you know that, then write like this. Again, we hit this before, but engage. Tell your story. Inform them. Share your expertise. Show what you know that can actually fill that hole for your client. Do all of that so you can capture their information. And then, once you've captured them, you're going to probably hit them with a direct mail campaign or an online marketing campaign or a, so or a social media campaign. Just keep writing that content to engage and inform and engage and inform until you've converted them into a customer. And conversions can mean a bunch of things. Ideally, you want to convert them into a customer. But maybe the conversion is just to get them onto your Facebook campaign or onto your Facebook page so that you can connect with them later or get a referral from them. So, your social media toolbox. Everybody good so far? Awesome. All right, let's talk about Facebook. This is the 1.5 billion pound gorilla in the market because that's how many people there are in there. About um, 180 million of those folks are in the US. That's right off of Facebook's advertising tool. If you want brilliant demographic data on your clients, try hitting Facebook and doing an ad because it lets you drill down and say, I want the women that are within 15 miles of my, my address that are into gardening and that have two kids. Direct mail campaigns are awesome, but you can't exactly do that without a whole heck of a lot of work. But with Facebook, that's free. I knew it was 100 million, 180 million people because I just said, I want to send a campaign to everybody in the US. And I said, hey, that's 180 million people. Easy as that. 60% of the folks on Facebook are female, and most of those folks are generally ages 18 to 29, so it's a little bit younger. You know, a lot of the kids today, they've moved on, and they're SMSing and Snapchatting and all that other crazy stuff, but Facebook is still the granddaddy and the big market inside of social media. In general, if in doubt, you should probably be on Facebook. It's the best mass appeal. Human stories, and in particular photos, are the best way to engage people on Facebook. Don't just post, today I'm washing the windows. Geez, look what Mittens just did. Post a photo about something that's really interesting that you did for your clients. Make sure that you do that. Um, ads allow you to laser focus, and the key is company pages. You should probably search and listen for your clients and what they, what they can do and engage them in conversation. Don't be afraid to thank your new likes. Follow and like those people that you're interested in. Look for the folks that you can have the most um, impact with. Who here knows what, um, what a referral partner is? Somebody, so like um, for an orthodontist, a dentist is a great referral partner because dentists see the people that need orthodontia. You, know, you open up and say, and say on, they're like, whoa, okay, then you're going to probably send them to an orthodontist. So you want to find those people, feature them on your Facebook page. Make sure that people know that you have a connection with your best partners. Create content for your customers and again, engage them wherever you're doing your business. Twitter, 550 million users. Most of those folks are more mobile than others. They tend to be a little bit more urban. A lot of folks in Twitter tend to have, you know, they live closer to geographic centers and they're the ones that have their phones out and that they're, they're hashtagging or pound signing. By the way, you can do hashtags in Facebook now, but I wouldn't bother because it has a tendency to, back, to have a backlash on you. So, but Twitter hashtags are those little pound signs with any code. You can pick any code that you want, so just go ahead and try it. But make sure that you're actually going to use it consistently and make sure that you search first. 
right? So you don't want to do a hashtag and find out that it's some, you know, clown convention down the street because then you'll have clowns showing up at the front door. It's not a good idea. So short posts and updates. If you have a lot of short, small, inf interesting information, you know, it's almost like the CB radio of the current world. You know, you're like breaker one nine instead it's hashtag one nine, right? Then you go out and you talk about what you're doing, how you can connect with people. Um, it's a great way to reach out and connect. To get started, create your bio. Make sure that you set one up for your company as well as yourself if you're planning on doing both. But if, unless your company is you, you might not want to just feature you. So you can reach me at Dave One Meyer on Twitter, but for the most part I use at BusyWeb for my, for my business concerns. With LinkedIn, 225 million users, these folks are where the money's at. They tend to control more data or more, more cash than most of the rest of the social media networks. Um, account executives, professionals, hiring. If you do B2B, you should probably be in LinkedIn. And if you're going to be on LinkedIn, spend the time to get a company page. Your company page gives you quick, quick access to client teams, and it lets you present yourself and your company from the best possible perspective. It's a resume for your company. And you can focus right in on the services that you highlight. You know, busy web services, social media, content, and web design. You can focus that up, and then you can ask people to refer business your way right through LinkedIn. Google Plus, almost nobody understands Google Plus, but it's really Google's answer to Facebook. If you want to rank well in your search engine results, have a Google Plus page and link to your page all the time on it. Google loves it when you scratch their back, and you'll get a lot of credit with those sparks, what they call it. 500 million users, 69% of those are male and tend to be tech savvy. Um, it's, it's debatable how much people are actually using Google Plus other than for search engine optimization. But you might as well play the game because it's going to help you get ranked better. Um, the coolest part I think about Google Plus is Hangouts. You can do video chats. And I got done with the video chat right before this meeting. Um, I do a series of webinars. You go out and you can just do a, a screen share with up to 10 people. With Hangouts on Air, you can share that to another 10 million people. And then you can have questions and answers now in Google Plus Hangouts on Air. So people can ask you questions while they're just watching you live on YouTube. The second you're done, you hit post, or come, you hit that you're done, and then it goes out on YouTube. So BusyWeb has 70 videos created on YouTube Hangouts on, or Google Plus Hangouts on Air that talk about everything under the sun. Next Wednesday at noon, we're going to be talking about Facebook. So if you're interested in that, check us out. Um, SEO, again, we talked about that. Circles, you know, basically try it out and use it. And to create a page for your company is going to be the best option for you. So to wrap up, you have to know what you're doing in social media in order to get the right results. You know, your website needs to connect with all of those things. You know, your online marketing, your advertising, your YouTube videos, if you're doing print and direct, which you should be. You know, all of that stuff needs to connect back and refer to each other because no matter where people find you, the next thing they're going to do is look for you on the web. The worst thing you can do is spend a ton of money on some marketing campaign on Facebook or something and then have a terrible website. All you're doing then is, in, is accelerating the process of people saying, I really want to work with this person. Oh, make, it, make sure that your website looks awesome. Remind people where they can find you and keep them where they can spend their time. BusyWeb can help by building optimized websites for social media content. Again, we build a website so that you can publish to your website and have it go out on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Google Plus all at the same time. No more clicking all over the place and wasting all your time. We do social media creation, content creation and monitoring, search engine optimization. We have the best dang hosting in the business. I would encourage you to check us out. Remember again, every, every Wednesday from noon to 1, we do buzz builders. If you go to busyweb.com slash bb, you can register. We'll give you a link directly to the Hangout. But then you'll also get to ask questions and make sure that your content is featured in what we talk about. We'll also take you up on, a, uh, on, an, on any offer to work with us at bb. So if you go to busyweb.com slash bb and ask us anything, we'll feature you. And the second half of that call, we close down the broadcast and we actually answer your questions live. So if you have any questions about well, how am I supposed to be doing this email marketing, I'm having problems with constant contact, I can't figure out how to do X, Y, or Z, we'll handle you live and get you fixed 
we spend that time specifically just to help people out. And then finally, you already have this, this sheet. Fill that out. Again, write Facebook if you want to be entered in the drawing for Facebook. Write uh, local if you want to have a Google Plus local page to rank higher against your competition locally. Or just write help if you stink at any of this stuff. So I have a question. Yeah. So what language are you writing? We, l we write in English primarily. I'm sorry, uh, like your site, you know. Oh, like, WordPress. Yeah, WordPress. Yep, we do WordPress powered websites. We do others, but this is, that's really where all the bang for the buck is. There's about 600 million websites on WordPress. It's the largest publishing platform on the web. Thank you very much. Have a great afternoon.